I often get asked by Calendly users whether they should be looking to use Microsoft Bookings instead. But equally, Microsoft Bookings users will highlight features that are lacking from Bookings and wonder if they should jump over to Calendly instead. So in this video, I'm going to explore some key feature similarities and differences between these two platforms to help you decide which one you should want to use and whether, if you're an existing Microsoft 365 subscriber with free access to bookings, it's worth also paying for Calendly. So what are these products? Both Bookings and Calendly offer you the opportunity to automate the process of having others, whether they be in your organization or outside your organization, book meetings with you. Essentially, they both provide you the ability to set up a web page you can direct people who wish to schedule a meeting with you to, and from there, they can find your availability and schedule some time. If you're interested in how to get started with bookings, then you might be interested in this video I published a few months ago. The link is below, so be sure to check it out when you're finished here. Bookings really comes in two tiers. It's included as part of your Microsoft 365 subscription, and this includes the vast majority of its features. But if you add on a Teams Premium upgrade, you do get a couple of extra features for bookings, one being SMS reminders and another being follow-up communications. Teams Premium costs $10 per user per month, and as well as other enhancements for bookings, provides a range of other capabilities across Teams. Take a look at this earlier video if you're interested in finding out more. The link's below. Calendly, on the other hand, has four major pricing tiers. The free tier gives you basic functionality. You can manage one type of event on one calendar, you can customize the look and feel of your booking page, and connect in different meeting platforms. For $8 per user per month, you get more flexibility in meeting options, reminders, and support. For $12, you get more automation and customization options, and for $16, you get some additional meeting options and integrations. Both Bookings and even the free tier of Calendly allow you to publish a web page where anyone can make a meeting booking with you. Bookings allows you to create different types of meetings, names, durations, and even whether they are in-person or virtual, but all virtual is through Teams, and publish them from your own Bookings calendar or shared calendars. You can also opt for creating meeting types that are for more than one participant, either on the customer or the staff side. So for example, an interview where two managers need to attend together. If you find content like this useful, please hit the like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel and active activating the bell icon so you'll know the next time I release a video. If you think this information would be useful to people in your network, please consider sharing it there too. Whereas Calendly presents you with four distinct types of meeting, one-on-one, -on -one, group, collective, and round robin, it may appear from first inspection that Bookings only offers you one. However, if you know your way around the services set up interface in Bookings, you can essentially create each of the meeting types that Calendly offers. And considering you don't get access to all of these templates until you're in the $16 a month tier, this is somewhere where Bookings scores an obvious win when you look into it. Calendly also offers you an ability to send a link for a one-off meeting where you can select potential slots from the time on your calendar. You can't do this directly in bookings, although you can create as many services as you want with custom availability. So you could do something similar just with quite a few more clicks. Lastly, Calendly offers a meeting poll. This is where a group of people can vote on a selected meeting time. And this is something that is not available in bookings, but it is now included in Outlook. So you can do it within Microsoft 365, just not inside the bookings app. Overall, both Calendly and Bookings offer an equivalent set of basic meeting management features. However, with Bookings, you have to click a little more, and with Calendly, you have to pay quite a bit more depending on what you're looking for in terms of the particular feature. Bookings offers basic customization of the booking experience. You can send customized reminder emails, follow-up emails, and if you subscribe to Teams Premium, you can also do this via SMS, although those messages are not customizable. You have some fairly rudimentary ability to customize the look of your booking pages, and you can embed this inside a website using an iframe, though this isn't the most pleasant looking experience. Calendly offers a lot more options, but most of these only become available at the $12 a month tier or higher. 
If you use Calendly free, you can add some branding to your booking page, you can embed it in your website, and that's pretty much about it. At the $12 a month tier, you start to get some interesting options that aren't available to the same degree in Microsoft Bookings. Firstly, you can redirect your guests to a custom web page after your booking, and you can even pass details of their booking to that page using the URL, meaning that you can have practically limitless potential to customize the experience from there, and this is something that you totally cannot do in Microsoft Bookings. You also have far slicker capability in Calendly to customize your messages, whether that be your meeting marker, your reminders or your follow-up, or even your SMS messages. In bookings, you can only customize the reminders or the follow-ups, the interface is not as slick, and you can't customize the meeting invite or the SMS messages that get sent out. Calendly also allows you to set up more complex workflows around your bookings. For example, scheduling the sending of event-related materials to your attendees. You can do this with Microsoft Bookings as well using Power Automate. In fact, just in the last couple of weeks, I've worked on a client project that had an interactive SMS messaging component connected to Bookings. But while Power Automate is massively more capable than what Calendly offers, it also is far more complex with a far greater learning curve. The most important integration to mention in my opinion is that Bookings is directly integrated into Microsoft 365. Even if there are one or two features in Calendly that are a little easier to navigate than Bookings, I always think it's important to recognize that adding an additional system adds more complexity, more management time, and more potential for something to go wrong. If you have Microsoft 365 deployed securely, the more you can do inside Microsoft 365, the less unnecessary complexity you're adding to your setup. And in terms of Calendly, you don't get options like SSO, etc., until you get up to the enterprise tiers, which are even above that $16 a month tier. The main way Bookings is extendable and can be integrated with other third-party platforms is through Power Automate. I already talked about this, but it's important to focus on the fact that while it's powerful, it is complex, and it's also fairly limited somewhat in what you can achieve, as instead of integration from inside Bookings, it gives you the capability to integrate from the edges of it. What do I mean by that? Well, one of the main requests I see that puts people off using bookings is to do with payments. There is no way to make people pay as part of booking a meeting in bookings. There are ways to do it retrospectively using Power Automate and then cancel the booking if they fail to pay in a certain period of time, for example, by sending an invoice from your invoicing system. There are also ways to take payments directly inside Microsoft Teams once a meeting is happening. But there is no way to take a payment in the way that 99% of people would probably expect if you said we're going to take a payment when you make a booking. In Calendly, the integration options are right inside the Bookings app itself. So the integration with Stripe or PayPal work exactly as you might expect. You set a price for your meeting type, and when someone comes along to book it, they're asked to pay. Once they pay, they get their booking. There is none of the hurdle jumping you need to do to make this happen in bookings. And this is an option in the $12 a month or higher tier. And if you need this, my advice is buy Calendly because it would cost you 10 to 100 times as much over a couple of years to have someone build this type of capability into Microsoft bookings for you. Calendly allows you to integrate with a range of different CRMs. You can also use Zapier or Webhooks, and the fact that you can use Webhooks means you can also easily use Power Automate. Many of the more enterprise-grade integrations are in the $16 a month package, or else a lot of them are in the $12 a month package. Again, most of these integrations could be delivered for bookings using Power Automate, but with somewhat more complication at the low end and much more complication at the high end. Now that's not to say that you shouldn't use bookings with Power Automate for integrations. I advise clients on projects like this all the time, but it's important to understand what you're signing up for and what advantages you are getting over just buying a more streamlined, purpose-driven software. Most of the time where bookings plus Power Automate makes the most sense is because we're worried about integrations across the business where bookings capabilities are just a small part of the total projects that you're looking at. 
So which one is best? Unless one of the niche features that Calendly delivers well over bookings is a key one for you, think of your payments at the top of my list, then I think bookings wins most of the time. You don't get anything in Calendly that you don't get in bookings at that free tier. And you don't really start to get any real differentiation until the $12 a month tier. And that's essentially the same price as a Microsoft 365 Business Standard license, in which bookings is just one of many, many components. Because both bookings and Calendly leverage your underlying Outlook calendar, there's no reason why you can't be really selective about who gets a Calendly license. If you have one team that needs to take payments for their meetings, buy them all Calendly Professional and leave everyone else with bookings. There is absolutely no reason these tools cannot play nicely deployed against users in the same tenant because all they're really doing is looking at the availability that you've got in an Outlook calendar. However, to all those people who dismiss bookings as in some way automatically inferior to specialist options like Calendly, it's time to look at bookings again maybe. I expected at the start of researching this video, as someone who uses bookings and not Calendly, to find a lot more features that are core to meeting scheduling, where Calendly ate bookings lunch. But really, until you start to think about deeper level customization or integration, they both do exactly the same thing. Considering how many people have told me how great Calendly is compared to bookings, I was truly surprised by this. The fact is, any business that spends money each month on third-party services to do things that are built into Microsoft 365 should regularly look at the viability of those Microsoft 365 tools. Not only is it easier to manage less systems, but you potentially can save a lot of money you can invest elsewhere. You also have an easier onboarding and support journey for your users, as you're only asking them to work in one place. And Microsoft 365's apps get updated so often that there will be changes between the last time you looked at them and now if you're relying on a third-party system with similar functionality. What do you think? Are you a Calendly user? Have I changed your mind? Or are you a bookings user who will now be trying out Calendly because of something I've highlighted here? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching. I hope this information was useful to you. And until the next video, bye bye.